Recently, I put together a channel point redemption that my viewers can turn my stream into a silent movie. And honestly, this was one of the fun things to do with StreamerBot is that I did this with absolutely zero coding. I think a lot of people avoid StreamerBot just for the simple reason that they think they have to be able to code in order to make something like this. You don't. So let me show you how I did this with absolutely zero code experience. So let's start with OBS. And what you're going to see is this source list. And the first thing I'll point out is the video source silent stream, which is basically just that film green as a video source that gets the effect. Then with this group that I've labeled the title card, it is actually just its own little like nested scene, which if I turn off will show me as I'm here on the screen. But this includes all the different text files that go into making basically all the text that shows up. And then I have little ornaments that I have put together that basically kind of create some of the effects. So these are just little parts that go on the edges here, little decoratives. So this right here where it says silent scene, this is actually done with the source clone plugin. And one of the nice things that you can do with the source clone plugin is that you can set to a previous scene. So whatever the scene was before you moved over to the new scene, it's going to put that in there. And then here I just have a simple color source that was black, that way it gives the background appearance. And then I also have the various different mu musics. It does randomize between the different songs, so that way it gives it a little bit of variety. Now, with the filtering, on the scene itself, I have an advanced mask here that basically is just going to adjust the shape of the brightness. So if I can just sit and slide that how I would need to, I wanted to make sure it had kind of a dithered edge to it, so that way it gave the effect that you would normally see on silent movies. And this plugin was done by Finite Singularity. Thank you so much for that. I can adjust the feathering on it how I need to, to where this edging would look nice. Additionally, on the retro effects, this is where I put a frame skip. Since I shoot in 60 frames per second, I do I skip every six frame to bring that down. This way it gives that nice kind of rough look when I'm moving. On here, on these move values, you'll see they're alternating back and forth. And what that gives is that flicker effect. And all this is doing is changing the brightness from one value to another. And I have the have it set to where one's at 50 milliseconds, the other's at 60. Kind of gives a little bit of an offset, actually. I think I'm going to change that to 70. There, that kind of slows down that flicker effect a little bit more to what I would actually want. Now, here on this user-defined shader, this is simply the shader filter. And I put it to a half tone. And what that actually does is it adds a little bit of a pixelation effect. So if I increase this, you'll see what it kind of changes to. I add just a little bit onto it just so that way we have where you just get that kind of texturing feel as if it was on a screen. The LUT, I just made sure that I chose some form of a sepia to make sure to give it the browning effect that you would normally see on all that. And then, of course, this color correction right here. This is what is being triggered with the move values that we have set. So it was doing going to the color correction the single setting, and it's adjusting the brightness. And these are all the filters I just have to have ready to go for it. This is what appears when a, when somebody is going to type into the chat. I have it set to where it'll capture three different comments made in the chat, and we'll choose randomly which one. And I'll show you how I put that together. Now, if you're wondering how difficult it was for me to actually put this all together, I will say it takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, and a lot of mistakes. In fact, most of the times when I build something like this, I intend to build it in a single action until I realize that certain parts of it cannot be done within that action and then I have to build another one. I try to make sure that there are as few actions as possible within my redeem. Does that make sense? I feel like I could explain that better. Now here in StreamerBot, you will see that there's uh, quite a few different actions and this is all for one single channel point. So let me just go ahead and point out the main one. So this is what triggers when somebody triggers the channel point redemption. What this is going to do is initially tell everybody what is going to happen. So, hey, there's going to be a silent movie. Everybody is going to be writing the story. So right throughout for a chance to change the story. Shorter is better and cleaner is funnier. This is my bot telling this in chat. It's also going to grab whoever's titling the movie. Whoever triggered it gets to title the movie however they want. It'll set that title and it's going to get the current scene set to the last scene. Originally, I was not going to use the source clones previous scene until I actually found that I could do that and actually do it pretty well. Then I also make sure that the title card and the silent scene are put together like they're supposed to. We delay for a couple seconds just so that way it's ready to go and film starts in three, two, one, and now it starts. 
What it's going to do then is we're going to trigger this get message one, which is over here. And you're going to see that there's a sequence where there's get message one, get message two and get message three. We're going to set the caption to whatever is in the message that's being sent through the chat. So it will check every single chat message. And then it's going to set a temp global of text one to yes. And now the reason why I do this is going to become apparent a little bit later, because this is how we're going to tell how many messages we got into the chat. Once somebody has triggered this it's going to go ahead and enable the second one to start and then it's going to trigger this action of get message one complete so for get message one complete all it's really going to do is just disable message one. Now, the reason I had to set it up this way is because if you disable within the action itself, it actually cancels out everything that's going on in there. So if I set it for a different action, it works. Don't ask me why it just does. I found that out by simply playing around with stuff. And then of course, get message two is basically the exact same thing, except at the beginning, we make sure that, hey, silent get message one is going to be disabled. This is simply just a backup in case for some reason, this one doesn't do what it's supposed to. One of the things I typically do when I'm not doing any coding whatsoever in StreamerBot is having to set up these kind of backups. And that's just because sometimes it'll skip something along the line. So as long as I make sure that I have some sort of backup in place, make sure everything runs smoother. I don't know why it's streamer bot sometimes skips an action, but it does. It, it, it's weird to me, but when you're setting stuff up complicated like this and you're not using any coding, you kind of have to take a few extra measures when you're troubleshooting to make sure things are triggering the way they're supposed to. Then of course, it's gonna do the same thing where it gets the message, puts it to the input two, text two to yes, just like we did in text one. And then it's also going to uh, enable the third message to go as well as shut down this one. And then of course, three is gonna do the exact same thing two did, but just for three. So you'll see that I turned off my mic and that's just that way, you know, it's a silent movie. Gotta make sure that I can't be heard. And then of course I make sure that the silent scene, the duplicate of the previous scene is also going to be muted because I don't want any sound whatsoever coming through when I'm trying to do this. In this group, you'll see that it's called Music Random. If I open it up, it's basically a turn on one of these songs. Now, if you leave it as just this, it's gonna turn on all of them. But if you right click and go down, you can do random and that will randomly choose a song from this one folder. Then I have set the active scene to the actual silent stream. So it actually switches to that scene then. And I actually have it to where it starts recording. So this way I can actually make this content I can put up on YouTube or whatever I wish. It's gonna do a delay. Then we're gonna see that the title card is going to go away. So the title card is going to be up and ready to go initially. We had the, the intro now it's going to take that away and what you're going to see is me it's going to delay for a little bit and then i have a timer where this timer gets enabled now of course i'm just now seeing an error while i'm doing this video this actually should be moved up further but there is a timer enabled here and if i go over to settings and i go to my timed actions What's going to happen is the silent movie timer is going to be enabled. So this will turn on. When it's turned on, it'll have eight seconds. This is essentially how I control how much time elapses to make sure we get the chat messages we need to and then turn it off to get a reset so we can basically repeat that process. I tried to build this into the action and yeah, that didn't work so well because if I left it in the action, it would delay things out further and further. So I had to break this down in a way that the timer is going to be a strict, this is when it's going to happen and we stay completely on target. This way it doesn't wind up lasting for four minutes when it doesn't need to. This way it only lasts 45 seconds, like I want it to. So when the timer goes off and we, let's assume that we have gotten messages like we're supposed to, what's gonna be triggered is this disable messages. So when the timer goes off, all the messages get disabled. Nobody can put anything in further and it's going to run the put in for the messages. And the put in for the messages here is going to go ahead and make sure that things are disabled the way they need to. And then it's gonna get the temp globals that we had put in when these were being triggered. So if you look at the get message one, you'll see that, hey, if it completes, it's going to say, yes, this was completed. So it's going to make sure it gets all three of these then it works backwards. So if three is yes, it'll do that one and not have to worry about two or one. If that doesn't work, then it's gonna go to two. And if that is selected, cool, then it's not gonna do anything else and it's gonna ignore that one. If neither three or two and we only got one message, then it's gonna do this. If we got zero, it will continue down to this pre-built to make sure 
that at least something is going to appear. And that is going to be the end of that action. So when we go back to our main code, so the timer then is enabled running all that, it delays for the same amount of time that the timer runs for. Quick note, you can see that I originally had built in here where it would do the action run for messages and disable all messages. The problem here is that it would wait too long to make this stuff happen. It would wait for a run message to happen and complete all the way through and then do this before it would do anything else. And it del started delaying and backing up the processes of everything. Doing this by a timer made it much easier. But once the eight seconds it's done, it's going to go ahead and it's going to hide the silent scene, which is basically where I'm on screen and I'm talking. When that hides because of how everything's set up in OBS, when that hides, it shows what is going to be the titling of whatever message people put in the chat. It'll show it for four seconds, then it brings me back on screen. We do a small quick delay just to make sure everything's gonna be okay. And then the timer starts again, and we begin the process all over again. And basically it's just duplicating that process a few times. Then here is where it all comes to an end. As you can see, I put the end. So here we have where we've done all the actions we needed to, everything's disabled the way it needs to be. It'll delay for three seconds, show the title card of the end then, which basically also resets this for the next time it runs. Then it's gonna delay for three seconds, just that way that the end is there. It'll stop the recording. And then we are going to return to the last scene. And if it doesn't know which one that is, it would just default to my chat scene. And it'll set the active scene back to return. So we're gonna go back to the scene we were on beforehand. And then of course, it's going to unmute my microphone. And then we go through and we make sure that whatever song was playing is turned off which there isn't a handy way for me to figure this out except for to just turn them all off. And as you can see, there was absolutely zero code in that whole thing, which is the best part is you can create something like this without having to do a single line of code. So if you ever have been worried about Oh, well, I don't know how to code. I can't make anything advanced like this. Yes, you can. You can do a lot of different things in StreamerBot without ever having to have any coding knowledge. I'm learning how to code now, and, you know, I'm a ways off from learning how to code in C Sharp. But what I am able to do is set up things like this using the tools that are completely available to me in StreamerBot and creating something unique with them. And it's just a matter of trial and error. And that's all I got for you today. I'll catch you on the next video.